we know utility tariffs have gone up. We also know that petrol prices, I'm talking about fuel, would also be witnessing some adjustments at the fuel pumps across the country. This is coming at a time when many people are still not too sure about how things will be going forward. We all know the economy is in crisis, and we have been forewarned that the times will be difficult in 2023 and perhaps 2024 and the months or years ahead. All these are happening at a time when there's a lot of uncertainty across the country, especially because of the ongoing talks and postponements of the domestic debt exchange program. Now, I'm sharing one of the things I saw on social media which caught my attention and which is informing our conversation today. It's about the increases. You would realize that fuel, water, electricity, the cost of doing business obviously be affected. So you see inflation, we know it was announced last week, 54.1%. Food inflation, we know it's about 59.7%. And then you would also notice that the policy rate has gone up. The policy rate has to do with the rate at which the banks may be borrowing or lending money to you. And then we also know that the CD to the dollar ratio is now about 13.4, 13.5. And then VAT obviously has been increased and it has taken effect. The E-Levy has taken effect. And then it will move on to what has really caught up with people. Effective today, we know electricity tariff is going up by 30%. Water tariff is going up by 8%. LPG is going up by AM, about 22 25%. And of course, diesel will go up, petrol will go up. All these things are happening at a time when many people do not have any pay rise. And for those who work in the public sector who have seen some adjustment in their salaries, the adjustment we have seen today, i.e. tariffs or the, the lorry fares, which we are told is likely or will be going up in the coming days, will affect the purchasing power that you have. If the cost of doing business go up, it will also affect your purchasing power. So in a nutshell, you and I, who are the average or the ordinary Ghanaian, are left on your own. God will be our protector. Long before today, we ends could not meet. They pay you, your salary within a week is gone. Now, it may take days for your salary to be consumed. And those who may help you may be telling you stories. What we have done is to really understand what has brought us this far. Because there has been a missed opportunity. An opportunity that saw some level of goodwill that ushered in this current government. But it's missed, and the producers decided to draw your attention to the narratives and what has brought us this far in this short documentary we have called Walking Down the Memory Lane, Our Economy Today. Once upon a time, there was a country called Ghana. It was struggling and Atumso. A crisis that arose from lack of investment in the power sector. The hydroelectric dams ran dry and a lack of liquidity at the time to purchase fuel to power the thermal plants, particularly Abwadze, made matters worse. Then Mohammed's administration was described as incompetent and the public was made to believe in a messiah, an economic wizard whose public lectures boosted his public rating. The World Bank, the IMF, the ratings agencies, Economist Intelligence Unit, all similarly predicted brighter days ahead for Ghana. After eight years of NDC government, today our economy is in decline. Where did the brighter days go? The fact is, you cannot achieve brighter days with mismanagement, incompetence. The expectation was high after the landslide victory in 2016 and the narrative kept the momentum. When I look at the economic management team, it is quite clearly a fantastic team. Professor Jan Bafo, Dr. Akutose, Dr. Afriye Akutu, Honorable Alain Chiremanting, Boachi Ejaku, Ken Oforiata, 
Senior Minister Yao Osafu Mafu. What a solid team. In fact, can anyone remember the NDC economic management team? But it was not long before critics began to flag the speed. But the president himself was not ready and that seemed to have become an abatros today, the size of this government. The really important thing is your capacity to get hold of the machinery and deliver. Because if at the end of the day, at the end of the four years, people of this country will wake up or feel a significant improvement in their lives, there are more jobs available, People are getting better wages. The cost of living is something that is within the reach of ordinary people. I don't think they're going to worry themselves too much about the size of my government. The public adopted wait and see. And that challenge was taking up. We're going to pass a law amend by amending the Public Financial Management Act to limit the fiscal deficit from 2018 going forward to a maximum of the window between 3 and 5% of the GDP. That is the way forward. It's, we've never done this in Ghana, but this demonstrates that the government is very, very um, committed to keeping fiscal dis discipline. Fast forward, persistent costs were ignored. Advised against borrowing was rubbished. In fact, the head of the economic management team was performing one desk per senior minister, Yao Osafumafo's account. I would want all of us here to, and on behalf of my colleagues, say a very big thank you to the type of leadership the EMT has enjoyed from Dr. Baumia. A chairman who is so involved we're already borrowing up to half of our GDP. Where are the internal resources? How, many res how much resources have you generated internally? Why are we still borrowing this much? After inheriting about 72% of GDP, we are hoping to bring it down slightly between 70 and 71% of GDP. So we are looking at how we manage the finances to bring down the debt. And soon, the world will be hit by a crisis. That will be the reason for our predicament. That we have put in place during the period of rapid growth was sufficiently robust to, in, to withstand uh, all the effects of the pandemic. The Obantampa program, the Ghana CARES program, has been about trying to reset the economy, trying to find the resources that are necessary to revive all the key sectors of the economy, and then also to focus on the new, um, not so much projects, but on the new sectors that we want. We want very much to uh, animate our development. COVID, which today may have been a conduit for gross mismanagement and a roadmap to the IMF partly did the trick, according to this Member of Parliament Public Accounts Committee. Let me give you a brief history behind this report. You recall that the minority moved a motion mm -hmm. and asked that we should, the COVID-19 expenditures be gone into by parliament. You know, the motion was shut down. Then, God being so good, the government brought a certain facility, some loan. That one billion. Yes. And, and wanted us to, to approve of it. Then we said, nada. To approve of this facility, we will have to receive an audit of the COVID-19 expenditures. So the speaker directed. So the loan had to be stood down. And speaker directed that the Auditor General conducts a special audit of the COVID. So this, was, so this entire project is an NDC initiative. Yes! And also because as part of the IMF conditionalities, it became, it became a requirement that be, for us to be able to even support them in terms of some of the programs, 
in, even in parliament it became we demanded that they ask them to produce a, a special audit of the covid 19. you remember this the inflation was going up interest rates going up exchange rate depreciation going up and growth also coming down and they had to run to the IMF for a bailout. Wasn't that the case? That was NDC economic management. I want to let you think about one thing. You hear the NDC saying, ah, but the debt level has gone up. Sure, the debt level has gone up, but economic management has not gone down. We are not going to the IMF. Whatever we do, we are not. The consequences are there. We are a proud nation. We have the resources. We have the capacity. Don't let anybody tell you. Like when Joshua Caleb and, and the 10 others. Today, the nation is grappling with a self-inflicted crisis, which actors were giving a leeway because public pressure was low. That seemed to be different today because it's biting, biting hard. And those who had voices but chose to sit on the fence have woken up from slumber. The domestic debt exchange talks. For postponement indicates government can no longer have its way. But is it because they now want to eat into their pocket? Think about it and reflect. Perhaps... These reminders should inform how taxpayers, particularly the middle class, participate in the governance process going forward. So we've walked down memory lane and many of you remember many of these um, um, short um, sound bites that um, excerpts of pronouncements made um, in recent past. And you would notice that the reminders were made available to government to consider several years ago. But that's where we find ourselves. Now, while government is considering um, a different proposal to be put before the individual bondholders and others who are still opposing the uh, debt um, exchange program, we want to look at how whichever way we go will affect some key sectors of the economy. We already hear that because of the conversations around the DDEP, many banks are already recording losses and there are fears that some banks may fold 